Hey, welcome to Super Social Club. I'm Jeremy. What's going on? Um, going live. Usually don't go live too often, but uh, did some shopping in the last little while. A bunch of packages came in all this week, so I thought I'd go live and do some unboxing. Uh, something always kind of fun. I always like watching people unbox stuff. It's just interesting to see what purchases have been made uh, recently. So hope everyone is doing well out there. Uh, drink a little Highland Park tonight. I've been on a Highland Park kick uh recently i always like the 10 year old even though it's just 40 percent abv i feel like the 10 year old's got a little more peat to it i like that um so i reached out this was at the back of the cabinet i haven't touched this since i reviewed it like i don't know a year or so ago maybe more um really good stuff if you haven't had the twisted tattoo it's 16 years old 47 46.7 percent abv uh, matured in wine casks really good balance um so yeah Super pumped also in the mail today. Got the new glasses. These are the new uh, Super Social Club Stoltzels. These are uh, official Glen Karen Crystal Stoltzel glasses. Um, so these came in the mail today. Got them actually, the big box came. It was super damaged right when I got it. And the UPS delivery guy was like taking pictures with his phone to like <laughs> document the damage. I'm like, oh great, yeah, it's not it's just, glass in there um but everything was fine there wasn't a single broken gun clearance so that's good um these came straight from wherever they um embroider them right in i don't know if it's scotland or the uk or where it was but from over the seas over the pond so uh yeah these are available um super awesome they're uh, up on the site right now of course if you're a patreon at the higher levels you get some of that so what's going on uh, i saw some people in the chat um what's up everyone how are you guys doing tonight um john's in the house john um i am not announcing the highland park uh book um glass and um coaster giveaway that will be uh on next week's drink my bar episode so check out for that i'm gonna give away a couple uh prizes then and then probably the next month i'll do a couple more i'm just kind of spread it out so yeah if you want to comment on my seven ways to develop your palette video just comment give a like and uh, you're entered and i'll do those draws uh on that uh drink my bar episode uh two slows in the hat in the house how's it going uh jasper what's up man uh donner pass uh red beer racing what's up dudes um bobby is in the house what's going on peter white what's up man how's it going uh sasha benjamin uh one lost cause hey mountain montreal what's up swami what's going on man uh nicholas uh drips and drafts what's going on kevin what's up man and uh go habs what's up guys what's going on um uh yeah the ralphie i want to mention that um i'm sure you guys have all seen the uh the podcast uh we got ralphie on rob uh, just kind of reached out to him he originally said uh, no, um, he wasn't going to do it. Um, said that it wasn't really his thing to like, do that. Um, and his internet connection, he's always wary about having bad internet, being out on the Isle of Man, gets terrible connections. He was telling us that to upload one of his videos, which are usually 15 to 20 minutes or so, takes five hours. So his, uh, his ping out there is obviously terrible. I'm like, why don't you get some, I don't know, satellite internet or something? I'm sure he could get something. But anyway, he was very wary about coming on um, just with even like a Skype or sorry, uh, Zoom is how we did it. But worked out. Uh, Ralphie's awesome. Um, his knowledge about whiskey. I mean, you can just listen to that guy talk all day. And essentially, that's what the podcast was. Um, Rob and I kind of just let him do his thing. And we got like two, almost two and a half hours of content. I cut it down to an hour, um, so we still got some more content. We'll be releasing that. Um, we haven't really discussed when we'll be doing that, if we're doing it as the next episode or maybe, like, filter it out down the road. But uh, there's still some little maybe, like, you know, 10, 15-minute clips here and there that we can uh, edit out and put in. So I uh, look forward to that in the future. Um, but, yeah, Ralphie's such a good guy. I'm so happy that he did that because I know he doesn't really – do that too often he was on roy's channel they did a live um like three hours of uh of content on there so check that out if you haven't already it's really good um kevin what's up man yeah what are you guys drinking like i said i'm on a um a highland park kick right now i tried the 12 year old the other night 
and the first time I tried it in a long time. And uh, you know who was telling me that Highland Park 12s are good right now? It was um, Josh from Know Your Whiskey. He was like, dude, the new Highland Park 12s are like phenomenal. And I agree. This is the first time I've had Highland Park 12 in a while. Uh, one of the newer bottlings. And uh, it's fantastic. It's so good. Um, so still probably one of the better buys out there in Scotch right now. Unless the LCBO, I think it's, how much is it the LCBO? Is it 65 I'm not sure. It's around 6570, which for the LCBO prices is, is pretty solid for something like that. Um, oh yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so the boxes I got tonight, uh, some purchases were made on secondary market, some uh, through uh, retailers uh, out of province. So um, we'll get into that. <laughs> Um, yes, was that too. Oh, uh, um, Peter White with the super chat. Thanks, man. Cheers. Oh, you know what? Where's my gong? So I'm prepared. Some serious dust on this thing. Jeez. Thanks, Peter. Cheers, buddy. while since this thing's been touched thank you so much um yes swami i owe you some beer i totally forgot about that um you are a stout and porter guy right i'll get some for you there's some really good uh stouts right now kicking around toronto for sure um 65 bucks for the uh the high bar 12 yeah Honestly, I'm going to get a couple, and I'm going to get a couple more 10s, too, because I just have a feeling they're going to discontinue that 10-year-old and make it an NAS, because that's the way That's the way they do it. Um, hey, what's up, Mitchell? Um, zeros. Zeros across the board in the LCBO uh, lottery. It's uh, It's been that way for me for the last six years, I think. I don't think I've won a single bottle. I think the very first year that the LCBO got put like the wellers like the weller 12s and everything into that lottery was the only time i won and i won uh weller 12 and that's the only time i've won anything in the um in the lcbo lottery i know a couple guys that won some stuff like um lobbies uh van winkle 10 something like that i don't know anyone that won a pappy um the numbers i remember i said before that they didn't release the numbers they did someone i think posted on Reddit or something of how many bottles the lcbo got and it was less than like the previous years. They got like three bottles of Happy 23 or something, six of the 20, maybe like 12 of the 15, just almost nothing. Like, it's just ridiculous um, how much uh, spending power the LCBO has and how little they get respected in um, the marketplace when it comes to allocated bourbon like that. Sometimes they do okay, but for that kind of stuff, it seems like they get very little. Um, you know, there's probably stores in the States that are, you know, a hundredth of the size and the buying power. They get way more. That's how she goes. Um, Red Bear Super Chat, thank you so much. Going with the Knob Creek, nine-year-old, 100 proof, classic. That's like one of my favorite um, bourbons. Always a go-to. Um, um, Todd, did you have any of those? Did you get any of those um, single casks? Like the single, like the, sorry, the store picks. Cheers, by the way. Those Knob Creek store picks, some of them, you know, 13, 14, 15 years old are so good. Excellent stuff. Um, did you guys do any, did anyone out there win anything in the LCB lottery? I wonder if you guys did or not. Um, all right, well. Um, yeah, this Highland Park, man. I have a 15-year-old that I haven't opened. It's been sitting on the shelf forever. But you know what I think I might do? I might just do like a whole Highland Park rundown review. 10, 12, 15, 18, 21, 25, 30. Though I don't have a 25 anymore. That got crushed. But I can probably find one. But that'd be cool. Do that whole, the whole age-stated rundown. And for the, for the NASs, I just... They're not going to be included because I don't have hardly any of them. 
I have a, like a Magnus maybe somewhere around, but there's just too much. Highland Park just like expanded their range and just, I mean, completely went crazy with it. Um, Darren got an art bag. So uh, this is this is something that Rob and I mentioned on the podcast is that LCBO put art bag into the allocation because they don't have any on the shelf. I think they had some 10 year olds kicking here and there, but you could tell, Corey Reckon, that's been pulled from shelves for like a year and a half or so. Uh, I wonder if they're going to put it back on the shelf. If not, I guess you got to wait once a year and pick it up. I mean, it's just so ridiculous. Um, all right. Well, should we um, get to some unboxing? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, man. I, honestly, it's like... I hardly even want to play because even though you anticipate not winning, you still are disappointed when you see that you've won nothing. Um, I mean, it is like hitting the jackpot, but that's why I don't play lottery, man. I just, I just what, what's the point? Just to be disappointed over and over and over again and just slowly trickle down money. It's so good. Anyway, all right, let's do some unboxing. So I've been doing some shopping. Um, so like I said, secondary market purchases and some, uh, some online retailers, um, got a couple bottles from the, uh, Springbank Society. Um, Springbank Society, uh, was of course limited in what they got this year. Um, I wasn't able to get a 12 year old because, or sorry, uh, wasn't able to get a 21 year old because they sold out super quick. Um, I did get a 12 year old. Um, so this, uh, came from Kensington to, uh, my buddy Jasper. Uh, he was able to help with reshipping this. So thanks so much, Jasper. Appreciate it. So in here, I believe is some of the stuff from the Kensington wine market, Spring Bank Society. I guess it was a draw. You essentially had to like put in for what you wanted and they, they draw names because there's more members, of course, than bottles available. All right. Actually, I'm going to put this in the ground and just pull them up one at a time. So great packing job, um, as always. Um, love these bubble wraps. This is the way you got to send stuff. Uh, so yeah, uh, Kill Karen 16. This one I was really looking forward to. Um, if you guys know, I'm a big fan of Kilcarran Distillery. Um, this is their oldest expression, I believe. They released, of course, those 15 year old single barrels that came out were so, so good. Um, only got to try the two, the ex bourbon and the Oloroso, but let's just stuff. So, yeah, here it is uh, Kilcarran. Let's see if that will focus. 16 years old, uh, 40% of course. Um, maturation on this, I think it's a combination of sherry and X bourbon. The color is super light, so maybe just all X bourbon. I kind of forgot now. Let me know if you know the maturation of this, if it is just uh, X bourbon or not. Anyway, pumped to try this for sure. So that's the first one. Uh, yes. So Springbank. Even the 12 year old's like almost so hard to get now. Remember, even just as early as last year, you could find this uh, in Canada. But um, but now, it's like good luck. Um, so there it is. This is the 2020 release, 56.1%. It's the first time they added, I think, the first time they added uh, French uh, Burgundy maturation uh, casks in this. So this has a little bit of burgundy cask in it. Uh, I think it's what, sherry, rum, burgundy, uh, ex-bourbon? Or is there port? I forget. Anyway, super pumped to try that. Uh, here's the box with it. So yeah, Spring May 12. 
Uh, so hard to find now. Ridiculous. And also, so this was not part of the, obviously, the Spring Bank Society, but I got a bottle of rum. If I can get it out. Hey, we're seeing the six in the house. Cheers, buddy. You yeah, have to destroy this popper. Sorry if that peed the audio. Ugh. All right. So this just seemed really interesting. Um, I'll give you a gong in a second there, Rob. Thanks for tuning in. Um, this just seemed super interesting to me. Caden Heads, it's a 19-year-old uh, cast strength. It's, um, it's a Trinidadian. Uh, Rob doesn't say... Uh, oh, it is uh, Trinidad Distillers Limited. Uh, what's the ABV? 55% ABV. It just sounded awesome. Um, Kensington Wine Market gets all these like really cool Caden Heads independent bottles of, of rums, and they just all sound so good. So I pulled the trigger on this one. It wasn't cheap. I think it was... Man, how much was it? 185 Something like that? I can't remember. Anyway, it sounded amazing. Single cask, uh, 19 years old, 55% uh, ABV. Don't have many rums in the collection right now. So i um, excited for that one for sure. So that's the first box. So yeah, three um, super exciting uh, spirits um, to try for sure. Uh, Rob? little gong for you, bud. Cheers. Uh, Rob, if you want to hop on, let me know. All right. Uh, what else, guys? Did you guys say um, what you guys were drinking? Let me catch up in the comments. <laughs> Jason Fist, what's up, buddy? Um, <laughs> yeah, well, I'm a society member, so what are you gonna we just have to say about that? Imagine the LCBO had a Spring Spring Society and they actually brought in bottles. Wouldn't that be so nice? And that'd just be the best thing ever if it's like, oh, yeah, we can get you anything you want from Spring Bank. You want those, like, really good 26-year-old single casts? We'll get them for you. I mean, it could happen. They could do it if they wanted to. I feel like they could. Next box. Um, so I think this was secondary market group, whiskey group purchase. I kind of forget what's in here actually. So I'm gonna get messy with the popcorn. Oh yes. Glenalkey, this is the 10-year-old cast strength batch three. I wanted to get a backup bottle of this, uh, purchase one. No, did I win one? I think I won one in a secondary market lotto and opened it, loved it. I think it's just as good as the batch four. Um, but I wanted to get a backup of this. You can still find batch two. Maybe I'll find batch one. Again, the maturation a little bit different each time. Um, I know that batch four used some virginal casts. I'm not sure the maturation on three. So yeah, there it is. Oh yes, yes. Forgot about this one. I mean, I didn't forget, but. You guys know what this is? Can you see it? This is the first Glenmorangie I've bought since, 
I don't know, maybe in like six six years. It's a tail of cake. Um, I first saw Whiskey Dick review this, and he was loving it. And I was like, well, that's the most, you know, um, what's the word? Gimmicky. I'm like, this has got to be the most gimmicky bottle I've seen in a while. Um, but then it wasn't until uh, Josh from Know Your Whiskey was like, you know what? This is good. It's good stuff. It says it's nice and sweet. I don't mind nice sweet whiskey. Bottle at 46. NES, of course. But um, I don't know. I'm just I'm just a tater. I just had to have it and try it. I know it's like a hype bottle right now. And it's commanding secondary market prices. But I was like, whatever. Let's give it a go. Um if I hate it, it will be a good video review. And if I love it, all the better. And of course, yeah, the uh, Glenalkey 10 year old batch three. Honestly, this is one of the best buys in Scotch whiskey right now, in my opinion, for sure. For what you get for, you know, around 120, 130 bucks. Um, cheaper in other spots of the world, too. It's cheap, way cheaper in the UK, US. Um, people were saying they find this for. 65 something like that great deal um so yeah so i had to try this one of course this is the nice backup to have for later and uh what do we got one more box uh there you go you can get the cake for 106 i forget what i paid for this for the cake i paid more than 106 that's for sure um yeah cake <laughs> yeah i don't know apparently it tastes kind of like cake we'll see i have had i have written down like cake in my tasting notes before so we'll see all right last one Uh, going back to the Campbelltown region for this, this one, uh, a lot of people like reached out to me and was like, you got to get this bottle. It's so, so good. So I was like, all right. Glen Scotia. This is the Victoriana. Um, don't really know much about this bottle other than just the recommendations. Uh, cast strength, 54.2% ABV. Um, I think this came to the LCBO or maybe it was the SAQ. Anyway, I missed out on it uh, originally. I think it was well-priced too. Um, but obviously it sold out pretty quick. A lot of people uh loving this bottle so excited to try it i've only i only own a couple of glen scotias and i should really get more so it always seems like they're pretty well priced and of course that campbelltown style is the one that everyone loves um what else to know this uh finished in the finest deep charred oak cast so it looks like it's a uh, virgin oak finish it's the trend these days man Virgin Oak finishes. It's the easiest thing to do, and it's giving them great results to Scotch for sure. Um, so you have it. Not a bad, not a bad little haul for uh, for a week of deliveries. Um, I'm excited for it. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. Um, let me know which bottle you want me to open, and let's drink some whiskey. Um, vote in the chat. Whatever uh, gets the most votes. Oh, you know what? I'll open two. Let's open two. Tell me what you want to see opened. Um, throw it in there, and uh, I will crack one of these. Or I'll crack two of them. <clears throat> um, Jesus Fist is saying that the Glen Switcher 15 is nice. Yeah, that's the one I have. The Glen Switcher 15. It is good. It's good for sure. 
All right, uh, Kill Karen 16, getting a couple of votes out there. Victoriana, Kill Karen 16. Spring Break 12, Spring Break 12 with the rum, the cake. Spring Break 12. Kevin wants the Caden heads. Well, I think for sure the Kill Karen 16 is getting open because I feel like there's like at least five or six votes for that. <laughs> Let him drink cake. Um, here we go. Uh, David, what's going on? Um, yeah, so unboxed a couple things and just uh, let me know what you want to see open. I'm going to crack uh, a couple of these bad boys. Um, a lot of people are saying Kill Karen 16, so that's going to be one. And the second one, um, what do you guys think? Was it Spring Bang 12, maybe the second highest voted, or cake? Maybe it's cake. All right, let's do, let's do this. Let's do the kill Karen. This thing's getting cracked. I if I can just put this shit away over here. There's some room. Uh, Super Bowl Sunday, you guys got predictions? Am I allowed to say Super Bowl? <laughs> Probably going to get demonetized. I hate how the NFL does that. They'll, like, go after people who say Super Bowl. Like, why? Come on. What am I doing? Where's the name? I personally have so far, I've bet on Tampa just because if Tom Brady wins another Super Bowl, I'm going to hate it. And at least I'll have some money in my pocket. And if he loses the Super Bowl, then, oh, well, I paid for him not to win. <laughs> that's how, that's my that's my look on it. Um, I guess I bet Tampa Bay plus three and a half. So they could, I could still win my bet and, uh, and Tampa lose the game, which is what I'm hoping for. That thing popped right out. Um, all right, let's go to the uh, the nice Super Social Club, Glenn uh, Copita. This is um, Glenn, Claire, and Crystal. Is that focusing? No. The cat approves. The thing about the Copita glasses that I really like is, like, you get a great nose on them. You have like a little more like delicate whiskey. Um, maybe something that's like a little bit older. Uh, something that's maybe a lower ABV. These things are great. <laughs> Let that open up. Um, yeah, the big game. That's what you have to call it. You have to call it the big game. Um, yeah, Tampa Bay getting home field advantage is huge. I mean... I guess it's not too crazy just because there's not that many fans. I think they've allowed, what, 20,000? Is that what I heard? They're going to have 20,000 fans. Like a lot of uh, frontline workers and stuff get to go. Like kind of a cool thing they did for them. Um, but obviously it's not super home field advantage. And another thing that doesn't make it as crazy is that Kansas City, I don't think, has to travel to Florida um, for the whole like week of events and stuff so they get to stay in kansas city until i think i think they leave today to go to tampa so they haven't had to go through all that crap they just do it over zoom or whatever so not as big as a home field advantage as you normally would have if a super bowl home team was playing in it but still still an advantage for sure so this thing's pretty tight definitely needs to open up a bit but um, maybe like a little bit of honey. I'm not getting much uh, peat in it at all. Definitely some vanillas. Let that sit a little more. Uh, 
Um, first time I had a Kupita was with the Dalmore gift set. But looking forward to Super Smash <laughs> Nice. Um, yeah, you know what? I, I had a Kupita and it, I broke it um, in the, I think it was in the dishwasher. Never put these things in the dishwasher. First of all, they don't get clean. They come up with spots. You got to really hand wash them. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, um, I mean, a lot of people love this nosing glass. I mean, you can get really close to the whiskey. It's only a five ounce glass, so it's not that big. Um, this will be good for whiskey in the sixth because you won't over pour because you really can't. I mean, that's probably like an ounce and it's almost, the glass is almost half full. Um, yeah, don't worry, Kevin, you'll get one. Yeah, so, again, really light on the nose, for sure. Maybe a little bit of that Campbelltown peat, not too much. Mm. That's really nice. That's all just honey, vanilla. The finish is really malty, really nice malt note, cereal, and then just more vanilla. And then a touch of that peat, just on the tail end, just a little bit. It's really easy to drink. Did anyone post in the chat what the maturation is on this? If it is all ex bourbon or maybe a little bit of sherry too? I mean, it's super light. If there's sherry in there, it's got to be very low amount. This is actually delicious. All bourbon, yeah. The nose is muted, but the finish on this thing is, is delicious. So much for the Kupita being in the, like the best nosing glass there is. I can't smell shit. Um, oh, so... Whoops. Oh, yeah. So 2% Madeira cask, eh? Wow. Just a little splash. Um, yeah. Sash was saying the same thing. Small amount of... Uh, or Marcella. So is it Marcella or Madeira? Either way. Doesn't really matter. Uh, yeah. So Kilcarran's all uh, non-chill filtered, natural color. It's crazy how like a 2% uh, influence will make a big difference. Was it the, um, what was it with Springbank had? They had like 3% port and you could definitely taste it. Was that the 21 last year? I can't remember. Or the 12? Good. Yeah, neck pourers, they always need to open up. I mean, usually I would pour this thing and let it sit maybe like an hour with new bottles, usually about an hour or so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly, though, since I said that, I can smell more. It takes a process. It takes a while. It takes a while, of course. Uh, not easy to get that Coke in 16 in Denver. 30 bottles, that's it for the whole state? Yeah, man. Um, I was really happy to find this. This is one that I definitely wanted. It was one of my radar of, like, you know, bottles to get 2020 releases. Um, you know, a huge fan of the 12, of course, and 
I mean, Kilcarran's just doing good stuff. They're just doing good stuff. All right, let me let me let this like little sit. And um, what was the other one we were gonna crack, guys? Was it the cake or was it the Spring Bank Twelve? Did anyone tally up the votes? I definitely didn't. It was pretty close between Spring Bank Twelve and Cake. Should we just stick with Campbelltown and do the Spring Bank Twelve? <laughs> uh, so yeah, Watchman. Um, is uh, stuffing the ballot box. Okay, what is this? Freaking 2020 election in the US? <laughs> uh, all right, let's do Spring Bank. Watchmen uh, rigged the election, um, which is a thing you can do nowadays, I guess. So it's going to be this. <laughs> this is your winner, folks. Take me to court. We'll see if you win. Secretly, I want to do this. Come on. This over the cake. Let's, let's get real here. You guys didn't come here to watch me drink some freaking finicky Glen Morangy, did you? Oh, there's smoke coming off of the top of that. Now, if you think the Kilcarran took a while to open up, this might take a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, the thing is coming. <laughs> we'll have to review the footage of this. All right. All right, so like I said before, um, a little bit of Burgundy influence in here. I think that's the first time they've done it in the 12-year-old. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I think that's the first. Yes, it does smell like spring bang. It's good, of course. You definitely get that like musty funkiness to it. Love that. There's a lot of funk in here actually on first sip. <laughs> uh, I don't like talking politics, especially on YouTube, but then it is what it is. Um, It's impossible for me to score it on one sip, especially on a neck pour. I'm just going to tell you that they're they're both awesome on first sip. <laughs> 88, yeah. 88 is where I mark it if I want you to go buy the bottle. <sighs> yeah, man. It is Funkadelic, dude. Like, the funk is just where you want it on this one. Imagine if they released a Highland Park, or sorry, a Springbank 12 without the funk note. Hmm. I want to mention one more thing. Because I bought another bottle, or got another bottle. Um, Hazelburn. Sorry, I should have put this in the mix as an option to open. Hazelburn 13. So I'm not like the biggest. Hazelburn fan. Um, I know a lot of people love some of those Hazelburns. I always thought they were good, but not like crazy good. Um, I didn't really go go out and buy them. This one um, I tried at uh, Rob's place a while back, and this thing has some serious funk to it. I'm like, how can a Hazelburn that doesn't have peat, right? They don't peat. The, the malt for hazel burns. This thing has some serious, serious funk to it. So is it the distillate? Is it maybe this is matured in a cask that had spring bank in it previously? What's going on with this? Have you guys tried this one yet? This thing's got some serious funk to it and I love it. And I'm not a huge hazel burn fan, um, but this 
is really good. So yeah, this was another one that came along with everything else. Um, 13 years old, Oloroso cask, matured. Um, 9,900 bottles. That. But uh, yeah, probably like the most amount of like that funky element in a hazel burn that I've ever had before. Um, no, I would love to try that. You know what? Who had that? Someone had a really crazy, um, Springbank single cask. Was it Casey? If you guys know Casey, he's got some good bottles and, uh, snap a picture of that thing. I think that's what he had. I don't know if it was 26 year old, but some of those old single cask Springbanks, I've only tried maybe one, but. It was good. Uh, yeah, it was really, it's really heavily sherried. Really heavily sherried for sure. There's a note in this that I don't know what it is. It's a weird one. So this, this Spring Bank 12, definitely, obviously a little bit different than previous years. What's that? It's a good question. I don't know. Like, I don't know if they just use, because like, Springbank will take two times distillate and they'll take three times distillate and they'll put that together. That's how they get like the two and a half times. So is it just, I don't know. It's a good question. Uh, DSVX saying the uh, Victoria Anna is a sign. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people have been raving about this bottle. Um, I know Rob has one of these. He said it was good, but he did. He wasn't telling me like it was uh, it was a must buy. But a lot of other people have been telling me that. So let's try that out. Um, let's see, what we got here. He's one of the Rosos are funkier than Parliament. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the extender ten isn't funky. Yeah, I don't know. This one, though, this one is crazy. Um, yeah, I mean, that could be too, as well. Like how they do the cuts. Um, it's a good point. We got We just gotta go to Springbank and just ask them themselves. Let's just get there, and we're like, "Yo, how does this thing get so funky when there's no peat in the malt?" See what they say. Yeah, snooze on it as well. Oh, Rob's saying that needs some open up time. Yeah, don't these all? Yeah, but this uh, this Springbank twelve man, it's good stuff. It's got this like charcoal, kind of like barbecue char, almost kind of note to it. And then there's something interesting about this one, and I'm not going to be able to pinpoint it right now, but I'll have to figure that out. It's a weird note. Maybe it's that, maybe it's that brand or that burgundy. But it's got that like, it's like that sharp. Uh, red fruit note. It's very pronounced. Anyway. Delicious. Of course. I mean, it's not going to be bad, right? Uh, 
Um, I've not had the 2017 Spring Bank 21, but I think the 2017, was it 2017 that had port in it as well? Obviously, the 2019 had some port. Sorry, it was like half port. It was half rum, half port, more or less. But I think that I think there was a previous year that Springbank 21 was the same. It was rum and port. I'm not sure if it was that year or not. Oh, 60 people watching. Cheers, guys. Thanks, everyone, for coming out. Um, I don't do lives too often, so I appreciate appreciate that. Um, everyone tuning in. All right, let that let that little bit sit, and uh, go back to the kill Karen. Yeah, so now more um, tropical fruits in this one. Definitely like some melony kind of notes going on here. These could probably benefit from a touch of water. Do I have a dropper? I do. We'll just do one drop to start and see how she goes. Spring Bank 18, um, the 2019 bottling was really good. Um, I have another bottling, but the the smudge on the back was, was out, so I'm not sure what year it was. It was probably a 2017, also really good. Those are the two that I'm most familiar with. In my experience, it's been the 15-year-old that's been hit or miss of the entire range. That's the kind of one that you might be able to get dud here and there. They kind of vary a lot in the 15-year-old. The I mean, they all vary because they all use different cask types each year for the most part. But the 15, I've had a 15-year-old where it's been like super, super like orchard fruit, like apples, um, very like very fruit forward. Um and then other years, just not at all. So I don't know what they're doing. Like the, the percentage of ex bourbon cast, I'm sure, is, is the culprit. Um, sometimes they're just really, really good. And sometimes they're just okay. I think, like, I think Ralphie reviewed a Springbank 15 year old, the 2019 maybe, and he gave it a huge score. Um, so yeah, I think it depends. Honestly, Springbank. 2019 is a vintage year where I think the entire range is good. The 10 year old was great. It's the one I named whiskey of the year in 2019. Um, the 12 is good. Obviously the 21 was one of our favorites. The 18 is really good. Um, Ralphie loved the 15. So if you look, if you're shopping spring bank and you go in, pop open the box, spin it around, you won't be able to see this on camera, but there's a laser note or laser tag with the date. And if it says 2019 or 19 is the first. Yeah. Buy it. Every single spring bank in 2019, in my opinion, is worth a buy. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, even like even 2020 people are saying the 2020 bottlings of Spring Bank are all just as good. So, all right, drop of water in this uh, Kilcarran. Maybe like a little bit of pineapple. Mm hmm. Yeah, definitely like a sweet pineapple note with the melons and then vanillas and everything else. It's delicious, man. It's good stuff. Really good stuff. Um, yeah, so prices. What did I pay for all these? So the Spring Bank 12, um, great deal, 120? 125? 125 Canadian, I think, around there for this. Um, Kukir in 16, uh, now I, I forget. I want to say, I want to say 150, but I'm not sure. 
the uh, Craig Alecki, what did it? What do we pay for this? So this one I bought on secondary, so it was a little bit more. But at retail, we had these over from the UK and all in with shipping, one twenty Canadian. The cake, I think I paid like, <laughs> I think I paid like one seventy five uh, Canadian for it. Whatever it is, what it is, I wanted it, I got it. Um, the Caden Heads rum, I think, was around one seventy five ish and the Glen Scotia uh 130 130 for that and the Hazelburn was also a good deal 100 I think or 90 90 90 bucks honestly like can't go wrong with those prices compared to the market nowadays I mean for for these ones I got at retail cannot cannot complain That's the cocaine. Oh, the Spring Bank 12 just changed. Did a complete 180. Now it's like baked goods, Christmas spice thing going on. Now it's nosing like a sherry whiskey. Well, before it was just mostly like weird kind of funky note. This thing's going to be one of those like chameleon whiskeys that keeps changing a bit, I think, until it opens up. It's a great tasting note. I'm going to use that. Uh, Jason's asking for a little blending. That you think what? It, it's, I mean, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do a little blend action. What do you think? Just pour it right in? Why not? So this is about 60% Kilcarran. 40% string bank. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Um, that's a question for Rob. He, him and Jasper kind of orchestrated that. I don't know if they got him from, oh, I'm not sure. I forget, Kevin, where they got him from. But, um, Batch 4 should be rolling into North American markets soon, I would think. Um, but there's still Batch 2 around, I've seen. There's still some Batch 3 around here and there. Um. I haven't tried batch two. I heard people like batch two as well. I mean, I'm sure they're all good. But definitely batch three and batch four, I know are good. So this little hybrid now is, is really, <laughs> the balance is completely off on it. But mixing those like tropical fruit with like a sherry, Hmm. The palette's good, and the finish is good. The nose is we is weird. Um, whiskey in the six, Kevin. Ask Rob whiskey in the six where he um where he got those in the UK because I he he just he just did it and I just gave I just showed him the money and got a bottle. Um. The life of the love. Cheers. What's going on? Uh, a little wee beastie. Right on. Cheers. It's definitely uh, late for you over there. Hope you're having a good evening. Yeah, 36 quid. I wonder, what do you pay for the 10-year-old over there? Probably like 40 quid, right? All right. Well, I think that's where I'm going to call it tonight, guys. Just wanted to go on for a quick little live and um, share some whiskey with you guys. Um, let's give some of this away. 
I'm not done yet. Let's give some whiskey away. What am I thinking? Um, let's do a little trivia question. I'm going to give away uh, a sample of each of the ones I opened tonight, the Kilcarran 16 and the Springbank 12 cash strength. And I'm going to give you one of the new Sippers Social Club um, Copita glasses. These are the uh, official Glencairn style Copita Glencairn crystal. Uh, really nice, really nice nose and glass. Um, all right. So, in the chat, um, first person to correctly answer will win. Uh, keep in mind that computer lag is computer lag, and who I see first in the chat will probably be different for who you see first. Um, trivia question. Um, something that I know, I guess. Um, all right, the, the Hazelburn 13, um, I mentioned it before, how many bottles were released of this? I'm looking for the total number of released bottles. It says it right on the label. How many bottles of the Hazelburn? 13 Oloroso cask were released. First person to correctly guess will get sample sample and a, uh, a nice little glass. And you know what? I'll throw in my um, my coaster. My Super Social Club uh, flavor wheel. Um, so 9,000 is not correct. So this is really cool. Um, it's got just a bunch of different like common flavors for how scotch whiskey is matured. So if you have like the cocaine, for instance, it's like it's a rum cast. So you can look like a rum and look at all like the flavors and kind of gives you a guide and kind of points you in the right direction of what you should be expecting. If you're kind of newer to scotch whiskey and you want to kind of figure out, you know, what to expect in like nose and taste. Um, someone guessed it, right? It's a uh, 19, sorry, 9,900 was the correct answer. Uh, first person to correctly guess 9,900 in mine is Nicholas. Cheers. I don't know if I can show this up to the camera and see if you guys can see that. If it will focus. There it is. Number of bottles, 9,900. Right there. So, uh, Nicholas, congratulations, sir. Um, just shoot me an email and I will get these uh, bad boys poured to you. It's uh, sippers social club at gmail.com if you don't know already. And uh, yeah, congratulations. Little uh, little class, couple couple samples, and a little flavor wheel. Right on. All right, guys. Um, so yeah, that's going to do it for me tonight. Almost forgot to give away some stuff. Where are my manners? Um, hope you guys are enjoying your Friday nights. Uh, have a good weekend. Enjoy the Super Bowl. Um, if you are a Tom Brady fan, <laughs> do you really need another championship with that guy's face on it? I mean, come on. Go Casey. Even though I bet on Tampa. I don't mind losing the money. Oh, Nicholas, and it's your birthday today. Well, there you go. You got your birthday luck, man. Birthday luck gets it every time. All right, I'm going to go enjoy some more of this, my little blend. And, uh, yeah, hope you guys have a good one. And, um, yeah, check out the channel. Uh, my next review will be um, a rum. It will be the uh, Foursquare, the 2008 Exceptional Cast, 12 years old. It was released 2020. And I'm going to do it head-to-head -head with the LCBO pick. Um, if you don't know, the LCBO did a barrel pick. I don't know if it was a barrel, but anyway, they did like a exclusive uh, release of uh, a four-square rum for the LCBO, a combination of ex-bourbon and sherry-matured rum. Uh, so I'll do the review of the uh, the 2008 and then throw in a little like semi-review of the LCBO pick. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, 
you will know my opinion of that already. But check out the review. Um, it'll be coming out uh, early next week. Uh, Kevin, thank you so much, man, for the super chat. Cheers, buddy. Uh, a little gong. A little gong for you, bud. Thanks so much. And uh, yeah, be good over there, everyone. Cheers, guys. Have a good night. Take it easy.